I assure you it won't be very difficult to understand some of the concepts that I plan to present. Even if you fall asleep, still you'll be able to understand them because they are so much part of your subconscious. Any knowledge which is not part of your deeper subconscious is not worth it anyway. My um, passion with design began very early in my childhood. Because in design, I saw tremendous propensity to do things, for things to happen. And we have seen this today, whether it's a football or a computer. It has immense potentiality. Uh, my journey in design began with product design. And the word product is an interesting word. Design, of course, is bringing things together and creating something new which has uh, potentiality, which is evocative, and so on and so forth. But I admire the person who called it a product. And the word product is also part of mathematics. So it's not summation, you see? It's five components of mechanical engineering and five components of electrical engineering combined together. Five into five becomes 25. That's the potentiality of design. Design is meaning meaningful because it is evocative. It sets off a chain of activities, a chain of thinking. When I was towards the end of my formal education, one of my teachers, during one of his interaction, said something extremely unconventional. He said, design is to do with the relationships, building relationships. That set me off on an entirely new journey. Now I have to discover relationships which I have to build. There's nothing in the textbooks. So I started looking at things, and I will take you through that journey. Can we have that light off? Is it OK? No, that's, that's a representation of Big Bang. OK? Immense amount of heat, expansion. And then cooling is happening. And how is this cooling happening? Energy condensing into matter, into mass. That's the power of design. It binds energy. It makes things cool. And you see this development happening over a period of time. You see the amount of persistence, perseverance, passion with which all this is happening. So values which are important to us are not socially given. It's part of the basic process of evolution itself. Let me move further come back to Earth, and there again you see the persistence, passion with which life is growing. Go further. See the evolution of the brain. A fish requires less amount of a challenge when it comes to swimming in water. But a spider requires much more challenge when it has to climb over stones. Brain evolved to take care of movement and recognize patterns. And something is immense happening. There is a continuity in the development right from the Big Bang. And you see a persistent evolution happening. And then you see further groups of living beings working together. That's where entrepreneurship is rooted. No herd of elephants would ever be able unless they were entrepreneurs. So some of these values that we are talking of is biologically based in us. 
It is part of the whole creative process itself. This is a very favorite diagram of mine. I was trying to understand how I can understand, how I can capture man-made designs. And when I have to talk of design to my students, I should be able to present it in a framework which is non-parochial. It should not be Western, it should not be Indian. I should be able to encompass both. After many years of search, I came across this. And the horizontal axis here is representing creativity. And the vertical axis is representing care. These are the two very fundamental attributes which go into any design. If you look at God or the concept of God, whoever created the concept of God, he embedded that concept with these two qualities, infinite creativity and infinite care. And that's why we respect God. If he, if he wasn't creative or if he was not caring, who would bother about him? So very interesting. Now what you see, vertical axis, the caring, you have to care for yourself. Unless you care for yourself, you cannot be strong. But if you stop there, it is no good. So you have to care for the others. And that's the movement which is very, very important. And that's the movement which is part of this ecological development or biological development that you have seen. If you look at the horizontal axis, which is to do with creativity, <clears throat> there is technical creativity and there is the emotional creativity. And I think this has been very well depicted in our mythology. You have the story of Ganesh and his brother, what's his name? Kartike. And you know the story of Narad coming and giving them a challenge of going around the earth. And whoever did it first would be presented a mango. Kartike in his in his way of the way he was built, he was a technical person, a very rational thing. He jumped on his peacock and began his journey around the earth. Whereas Ganesh handled this issue in an emotional fashion. He went around Shiv and Parvati, his mother, because Shiv and Parvati was anyway representative of the earth. Now what I found very interesting is that through this story, our mythology has emphasized the importance of emotional thinking. I go further and I say, okay, why was Ganesh given an elephant's head? And I look at the characteristic of an elephant. And you go to the net and you'll find that elephant is the most emotionally expressive creature. So they took the head of elephant, they did some genetic engineering, and lo and behold, you had Ganesh. Then there is the story of Asuras and Devtas. So Devtas are there and Asuras are there. And there again, they are emphasizing the importance of the two working together. Now what I find is that there is no design which is 100% technical or 100% emotional. If it has to exist in society, physically exist, then it has to have a technical component. Again, if it is to be accepted by the people and it has to be part of the culture, then it has to have the emotional content. Similarly, out there, you see, the two have to, you have to have a design which is robust, but it must care, it must do something for the others. So understanding this framework is very important. So I try to map. So you have Mother Teresa, you have Radha there, you have 
C. Dracula, you have an executive lady. They all represent different values. They all belong to each of these segments. You have a sari, you have a monk's cloth, you have a space suit, you have a gladiator suit. You have a farmhouse, a hut, a multi-story residential complex, for the poor sikri. Manufacturing emotion, so much part of our culture. That's one big area of entrepreneurship. And manufacturing products. Now, there is more emotional intelligence here. There is more technical intelligence here. You can, through technical knowledge and understanding, you can build up what super highways for journey into the planets and other stars. Or you could have Kumbhela. That cannot be done emotionally. This cannot be done 100% technically. Both are required. And our knowledge system should understand that and develop that. Again, with each of them, you have some associated values. Unfortunately, in our education system, we emphasize a lot on information and less on values. But it is the values that make you a professional. Now I will take you through a quick journey. My interest after retirement was got diverted towards sustainability. And my concern was that how can man-made designs be done in a fashion so that they will be more amenable to the biological systems. And then I asked myself, what is there in nature which makes things so integrated? And so I looked for laws or values or propositions or principles which were shared across different species. So one is that when a system is assembled, there shall be lowering of energy. So it's a good thing to do that, to assemble, to create. When it is disassembled, there shall be release of energy. So revolution will release energy, will create turmoil. Next principle. They emphasize on a lot on local creation. So whatever is to be created must be created from whatever is there around you. And I think this is an important principle which we must understand. I think it's important for Northeast to understand that. So try to be as indigenous in your development as possible. This is what happened in nature. This is what, if you do, you will be sustainable in your development and growth. So be local, be indigenous. The way things happen in nature is that one set of species will always create an environment which will assist other members of a species to survive better. So whether it is a flock of birds or a swarm of bees, Together, they will create an environment so that it is more conducive for them to survive. And same thing we have to do. So we set up an industry, and we have to develop the surroundings in such a fashion so that that industry uh, is able to survive better. Maybe through vendors. Nature designs exist in symbiosis with the environment. This is another thing that we have to focus a lot on how we can create in symbiosis with our environment. We are not existing on our own, so that would be very hedonistic. So you have to start caring. So, so care and reciprocate is very important. We have to look for a plurality of part to achieve a goal. So creativity is again very important. So whatever we do, we must find different ways of doing it. 
and then we choose the path which is most conducive to that moment. And how do we decide the conducive part? We shall see further in the other laws. Systems are designed to sustain their integrity. So if a tiger is there and it has to hunt and it has to run at a speed of 120 kilometers, it can't afford to fall apart. So you have to design the system to take the challenges and to be able to sustain that integrity in the most challenging of situations. Whatever you design has to be designed both technically and emotionally. So you have to be strong, you have to serve your function, and you have to integrate with other species. That's where emotional design comes in. So you have to relate and you have to connect. Don't spend information or energy or material more than is necessary. This is another very fundamental truth. And when we design products, we have to keep that in mind. The sooner we learn, the better it is. Whatever you spend, make it useful for others too. And that's what nature does. So they may have open defecation. Every species is openly defecating. But the system is not getting destroyed. No species is getting destroyed. Life regimes must strengthen capacity to live. So any species, whatever the life regimes is, is so designed that it strengthens the capacity to live. Today we are suffering from lifestyle diseases. There should be no lifestyle diseases. If the lifestyle is well planned, it should actually make you healthy. Ensure growth through interdependence. This is important and leave behind a legacy of support and care. So even when you die, the waste is there, how it helps the other creatures, other products, other industries is very important. If we keep these concepts in mind, I think it would uh, chalk out an entirely different path of innovation. I think the next generation of IPR will come from these principles. A lot of entrepreneurship will happen around these principles. This is what nature values, shares among its creations. It will be the source of next generation of intellectual property and entrepreneurship. There is a path of development that is not based on turmoil and disruption. Harmonious change, evolution, and development is possible. And that's what we have seen through this huge history, this very long history, beginning from the Big Bang coming down to the evolution of man. And this is the message that has been given repeatedly in our system. Thank you. <laughs>